Sony menus are just terrible. Some things are okay, but most things have no logic. So today, I'm gonna show you my custom button mapping so you don't have to go into the menus like ever, or almost never. Let's start with three most important buttons, ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. I assigned the ISO to the wheel, the shutter speed to the rear dial, and the aperture to the front dial. These are the functions I cannot live without. Next on the list is the custom 1 and custom 2 buttons. I have them assigned as creative style which has all the classic styles like vivid, standard, neutral and so on. And custom 2 is assigned to picture profile where I have my custom film simulations. These are film profiles I've been working on for the past year. More info about that in an upcoming video. Okay, so let's get to the dial. On the dial knob, I have two memory calls which basically remembers every setting, frame rate, resolution that you have set on the camera on the moment of saving. So, you can easily switch, let's say, between 4K 25p to Full HD 50p or Full HD 100p. And that is so powerful. Just imagine being at a wedding and you just need, uh, you just realize you need 100 right now like boom swap the knob and you're there no menus no time wasted on searching it's just awesome but here it becomes even more interesting memory recall doesn't only save share speed settings and frame rate or whatsoever it also saves picture profiles which means that on this camera you can actually save up to 30 original picture profiles and now you're like wow but why do I need 30 picture profiles on this camera and most people are fine with only 5 or 10 picture profiles and that's okay. But maybe you're just like me and you already have like 10 profiles that you like and do not want to modify. So you just maybe need one or two extra slots to experiment without losing the original settings of one particular profile. So you can do this while in one of the memory recall modes. And the cool thing is, at the end of the day, if you don't want to keep the changes brought to the profile, you just have to switch the dial and it resets completely to the original. That's how I did the 10 filming profiles. Okay, so back to the subject, button mapping. The next button is set to live view display. And as you can see, this enables or disables the real-time effects of the settings. The button next to it is set to magnify for fast focus checking, which is also super helpful if you're shooting in the studio and you want to micro-adjust the focus, but this works only in manual focus, so be aware of that. The focus joystick controls the focus point, but if you push in the middle, just like clicking, it opens up the Kelvin menu. This is probably my favorite and most used shortcut because it's just so easy to change color without going into the menu. Last but not least, if you push the wheel upwards, it will change the on-screen display of settings. If you push the wheel to the left, it will open the drive mode menu, which is super helpful to change from single to high or maybe bracketing. Now if I push the right button on the wheel, it opens up the metering mode menu, which is good for different exposure metering. Push it downwards and it will give you silent shooting options. If you press the middle point of the wheel, it will bring up the aspect ratio, which is 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. The trash bin enables or disables touch functionality. Custom button 3 is assigned to Super 35 mode if you need extra reach. And finally, the function button opens up the display menu, where you can change stuff like audio, zebra, and so on. I recorded my custom button menu interface so it's easier for you to make the same mapping and I hope this video saved you some time. If it did, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to be notified of any new videos. That's pretty much it. See you in the next one.